The ministry that we have here is, as I said, very unique. What we're trying to do is uh, reach folks for Jesus Christ here in uh, Bradley County. And uh, this coffee shop, one of a kind really, uh, is very much involved in uh, changing the lives and involving people in the community to come and help us minister to other people. Finding the truth is not just a, you find it and then that's it. It's a journey. It's a journey. It's a daily journey. The, the program here um, is ministry, but it's also uh, important that we uh, break even. And uh, so what we find is the ministry of even the coffee that we use, uh, helping the free trade the way that it is. It's, uh, it's worldwide and the Salvation Army is changing lives. You know, who would ever thought that a cup of coffee would change a life? Now, I talked to a council member not too long ago who said, you know, Major, I've been in this coffee shop. I brought two people here who were giving up on God. He says, I've been able to lead them back to Jesus because of a cup of coffee at the Salvation Army. So for me as a pastor, it's life changing. For as a Salvation Army officer, it's unique. Uh, but as a kingdom builder, what we do here will go for eternity. My name is Joel Rogers, and uh, with my wife Cheryl, we were the founders of Inman Coffee, where I serve as the director of Christian education here, and have a, a kind of unique role um, in that, in helping to to lead and guide the ministries that happen from the Inman Street Coffee House. We we get to pour out into the community, we get to love on the community, we get to make coffee, we get to make lattes, we get to engage with people from every possible walk of life, build community with everyone that we meet, and do it all in the name of Jesus. Um, and, and get to introduce them to the concept of the Salvation Army and what the Salvation Army does. They sent them out by themselves. They sent them out two by two. See, together we are a beautiful expression. My name is Sergeant Ruthie Forgy. I'm the core administrator here in Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, it has been a delight of my life to start Cleveland as a core plant. God has been very, very good to us and shown us a lot of favor in that. Uh, we have a soldiership now of 60, 60 65 plus soldiers uh, that are very active. We have a, a, a thriving club, club 316 with uh, 50 to 60 children that attend uh, every Monday night. And then we have a youth program uh, on Thursday nights uh, called Thrive with about 40 plus young adults, uh, middle school, high school, college age students in that. And then uh, also one of the things that works best and well in Cleveland is the coffee house, uh, just a place for relational ministry. Uh, it welcomes those who may have been involved in maybe some church hurt somewhere in their life. So like me, who was a prodigal for many, many years, who left the church for more than 17 years uh, because of some church hurt, I know that there's a, a world of people out there who have that same experience. And one of the ways to reach them is just coming in over a cup of coffee and talk with them and share with them, um, you know, just uh, maybe a testimony of what God's done in your life or just talk to them about the weather and what they're doing uh, and find that opening in relational ministry to relate to them and begin to share with them, include them and invite them. Uh, we are a ministry of inclusion and uh, regardless of where you come from or your background, uh, we, we strive to find a place here for you uh, where you feel and sense that you belong. I was taking classes at a local community college when my friends told me about this great coffee shop that had free Wi-Fi and amazing coffee. And so uh, as a college student, those are two things you look for. And so like me, I was attending a college and they, they made their target uh, reaching out to the college students who didn't really have a place to call home or they're away from home. And so um, they're looking for a place where they can belong and have it like just that place of fellowship. And so um, for me and many of the high school students in that area, we began coming to Inman Street Coffee House and they developed a sense of community and like um, almost like a misfit kind of family. We all came from different backgrounds. Um, we were all dealing with our own different you know, family issues, but together um, there was just this beautiful diversity that formed out of our, our time together. I'll never forget, I came in the coffee shop one day after finding out some, some pretty bad news about my sibling, and um, Joel Rogers was working behind the coffee shop counter, and he looked over at me, he's like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I feel I'm fine. He's like, no, something, something's going on. Like, you're normally really bubbly and happy. And he's like, do you want to talk to me about it? And so I was like, I just, 
you know, I don't think people really understand my family situation. Um, I just, you know, he's like, well, can I pray for you about it? And that's, that just set me back because I was like, wait, what? Like, you want to pray for me on that? And so at that moment, like, he, he sat right there behind the coffee bar and just started praying for me. And it was at that moment that I knew that there was something truly different about this place and I wanted to be a part of it. And so I began to get more and more involved with the Salvation Army. I started coming every Thursday and hanging out um, almost every day at the coffee shop because it was actually just a block from my house. And uh, I heard about a summer camp program and I was looking for another job at that time and I was like, that would be great. Um, it's only, you know, seven weeks long and I, I was really interested in working with kids and so I applied for the job and uh, I got hired there at Camp Paradise Valley. So up to that point, my knowledge of the Salvation Army was that they did kettles and that they had thrift stores and now a coffee shop. Um, I knew that they did something in the offices, but I wasn't sure what that was about. And so while at camp, there was a 730 representative that came and he shared about officership and I was just completely blown away. I had no idea the Salvation Army did social services and they had shelters and it was so much bigger than I thought. And uh, I began feeling like God pulling on my heart at that time, like this insane curiosity to find out more and also this, uh, this attraction to it. And I couldn't quite understand what that was until at the end of the summer when I came back to my core, um, I just really felt drawn into the Army and I talked to my Corps officer, Sergeant Ruthie, about it and she began to tell me more about, more about that program and so um, that following September was 7.30 weekend. She asked if I wanted to go and I said yes, I would love to and so uh, that's when I came to the college and I received confirmation that this was where God wanted me. Your defense is the only thing that wakes me in the morning. I'm Ben Strawn. Um, I'm a student at Lee, but I play music. Um, I've played music in Cleveland for a little while now, but I do some uh, Chattanooga stuff as well. So I think really the first time that I ever started playing music was here. And honestly, it seems like you forgot us all at home. The place you had your first kiss and made Jesus Christ your own. Um, I played like an open mic um, and I played a bunch of like songs that I wrote that weren't very good, but Joel was like, oh, Ben, it's awesome. And so he gave me a show um, here and ever since then, I think my confidence was like boosted. Emin, Emin definitely has his own vibe. I mean, Emin, I like it. Um, we get a lot of people here. That's the, that's the best thing about Emin is you can pack it out. It really is unique. It has its own personality. Um, there's a lot of people that you see a lot of times at your shows. I think Emin is great because of, of the mission that it has, the way that it cares for its people uh, that come to the Salvation Army, um, and the way that they care for people that um, you know, help benefit it, you know, like artists or, or students. And you know, It's a great environment to study. And, and so Emin definitely had a, a huge part, as it did with Edward and Jane, as it did with several um, artists around here. I think Emin really just helps birth um, Artists. Hi, we're Edward and Jane. We are a traveling uh, band really fronted by a duo, uh, husband and wife duo. My wife, Emily, and myself, Timothy. And we love Inman Street Coffee. We play here all the time. We actually played our first show here. It was um, one of the best experiences ever. And each time we come here, I feel like we grow and um, we get to grow alongside the staff that are here. And we, we travel a few times a year and every time that we go out on the road, we have to make a stop here in Cleveland, Tennessee, just so we can be with family at Inman Street. And Joel and the staff here, um, they really believed in us. And like we said, we played our first show here. Um, and we had a lot of people come alongside of us and um, like just really believe in us and help push us towards something. Um, and 
push towards something greater. It's definitely family here. Yeah. Everybody that we meet, even people that we meet for the first time uh, that walk in these doors, become family pretty quickly. And um, there's just not really much more of a special place than England as it relates to where we can share our music and our, you know, the things we love to do. So yeah. this place, Inman Street, has done that phenomenally. Um, both through allowing artists to come in and share their stories and impact the people that come in, but also just through coming in and getting a cup of coffee and talking to any member of the staff and feeling like they will genuinely listen, or even if you don't buy anything, just being able to come in and sit and uh, get out of the cold for a minute, or um, just to be heard, to, to find some fellowship, some family with the different members of the staff, but also just most of the people who are here. I think that's what's really different about the Salvation Army, and especially Inman, is that you don't really ever come in here and leave feeling like you weren't heard or that you weren't special or that you weren't important. I think every time that I come through these doors, I'm greeted with a hug and a smile and uh, just the readiness for someone to hear how I'm doing honestly and not just um, kind of get me in and out quickly and take my money at the door. The Salvation Army is pretty misunderstood uh, as far as I'm concerned. The mission of the heart of the people of the Salvation Army is to love on people, to change lives, to uh, share stories, to be honest and open and willing to lend a hand to whoever needs it. I think like the mission um, and the vision of the Salvation Army and the ministry lines up so well with um, who we are as people and what our band is trying to accomplish. Um, and I think in ministry has just been a, a safe place where we feel loved and um, that we are family here. But I think that they do that for everybody that walks in the door. five years God has been able to to use us uh, we feel we feel uh, really unworthy and we're excited to see what comes next you know we, we hope to see other uh, course who have a similar setting as we do and, and have a similar need in their community um, stepping up and saying hey we're interested in launching something like this um, and, and to be able to work with them to, to do that we would love to see this concept catch on in a, in a way that um, when Salvation Army does something they, they always do it very, very well, and I'm excited to see um, what that becomes. Five years in the making, um, it, it's been good. It's been very good.